thank you for uh, your presentation and I want to say thank you to uh, uh, for the picture that I think is <laughs> it was not the best picture of my life but uh, uh, I will talk to you about complication and management uh, and surgery after uh, in common pathology mainly in hemorrhoids yeah Okay, so those are the list of possible complications after you do surgery for hemorrhoids. See, are quite a lot, and in bold you can see the most common, post-operative pain, UTI, hemorrhage, septic complication, skin tags, even very, very rare, like uh, uh, penile trauma uh, after uh, uh, the use of the stable. But overall, all these complications are about 10%. Uh, readmission rate is between 5 and 10 percent and reintervention rate is up to 20 percent. So we go through all this. I think the most common complication, and I will use the term complication, is the post-operative pain. All patients who undergo surgery for hemorrhoids have pain. This is an anticipated and most experienced consequence after surgery. It depends from the type of surgery, the kind of uh, post-operative analgesia, uh, Leads to urinary retention, late discharge, readmission, etc., etc. So, let's start with this. This uh, is our experience with uh, close to 3,000 hemorrhoids in the pool analysis, with uh, uh, several centers uh, around our uh, university. And you can see that there is a difference according to the kind of surgery you perform. So you have the high rate of uh, post-operative pain after uh, Milligan Morgan and the lower after stable demoroidal opexy. And this range, in our experience, between 7% to 30% with an average of 15%. We uh, define as a uh, pain a bus score greater than 7 after surgery. In literature, we know that stable demoroidal opexy has the lower incidence of post-operative pain. This reduces the analgesic use. Uh, there is a reduction of about 40% of this use, and people are uh, without pain, can be discharged immediately, and, and they are okay. But similar results may be observed if you perform hemorrhoids with uh, uh, radiofrequency. You have less pain than Milligan Morgan, less itching, less secretion duration less uh, bleeding duration after surgery. And this is uh, our experience uh, with uh, radiofrequency uh, Milligan Morgan surgery. Uh, how we can control post pain? First of all, a good local anesthesia is important. Put dental block. Local Ketrolac, we do use a, a Ketrolac uh, uh, injection, uh, 60 milligrams in the internal sphincter immediately after surgery. Somebody used uh, toxin botulin, uh, somebody in the past used the uh, lateral internal sphincterotomy, especially if the patient has a concomitant uh, anal fissure. After surgery, it's very important to use paracetamol, Ketrolac, a, a, a good control of the pain. I will show you some, uh, um, some papers now regarding what we do after surgery uh, to reduce pain and uh, power healing uh, after surgery. Topical ointments of nitroglycerin, I believe, is uh, one of the most important things that you can do after surgery. We do use nifedipine or uh, nitroglycerin after surgery. This reduces the spasm of the, mu the muscle of the sphincter, and this may help recover after surgery. And this is a, a study that we performed a few years ago. You can see that the use of uh, 0.4 glycerin trinitrate after surgery reduces pain duration after surgery, reduces secretion, bleeding, itching, and there is an early return to work. So this means that if you use this after surgery, reducing the spasm of the muscle, probably you, you may have less pain after surgery. And then there is uh, the chronic pain. Chronic pain is uh, not unusual. It's uh, less than 2% in our series, ranging between 0.67% uh, with uh, the arterialization to 2.1% uh, after stable demoroidopexy. Why do we have chronic pain? As I told you, it's very unusual, less than 2%, usually in the region less than 1%. It's a secondary to contracted anorectal outlet, secondary to an anal fissure, 
that may be preexistent to surgery can be due to an ulcer uh, and you need to explore underlying defecatory disorder if you have chronic pain after uh, hem uh, surgery for hemorrhoids. The treatment is uh, conservative with oral and local uh, painkillers. Can be useful a uh, Botox injection to reduce the spasm. Can be used a lateral internal sphincterotomy or ulcer excision or an advancement flap if you have an anal fissure that doesn't heal. Uh, it's more common when you do stable demoradopexy. In the literature, it's described up to 30%, commonly ranged between 2 and 10%. Uh, is uh, usually uh, uh, post defecatory or uh, is uh, associated to urgency. Is related to smooth muscle incorporation, and you can check the um, pathology of uh, your specimens. I, I will show you now a study. Loose usually involving the sensitive epithelium may be responsible, retained staples, anal fissure, sphincter spasm, rect rectal pocket syndrome or uh, local sepsis. This is a study that we did uh, about 10 years ago. We look at the, our specimen after stable demoroidopexy. You can see that uh, probably was an imperfect technique or even uh, if it was a good technique, a surgery. Uh, at the pathology, we, uh, we have seen transitional and squamous epithelium. And this uh, uh, was um, associated with more pain and chronic pain after surgery. When you have stable line retention, I think the best surgery will be do an exploration under anesthesia and remove the agraphs. Or anifedipine, 20 milligrams twice a day is another solution. Seizure line revision, transanal local anesthetic and corticosteroids or biofeedback and pelvic floor physiotherapy is, uh, is important. I remember you that you always need to explore for uh, additional defecatory problems with these patients. Sargal nerve modulation is uh, another, another option. This is our experience with uh, our cases and referred cases who had chronic anal pain and uh, in some of those we did the uh, UA and uh, we removed the staples and patients had a, a good outcome. Urine retention is another common complication and this is a, a complication that can be avoided uh, easily. It ranges between 0.3 and 22% and this very wide range means that there are no correct protocol probably in uh, the majority of the hospital or uh, in the majority of the, the centers is a very wide because probably they, they need to do something to, to reduce it. You see, you see that it depends from the kind of surgery. It's more common with the stable demorodopexy. It's uh, rare when you do radiofrequency or milligram organ. It's about 5% in our experience. And this is uh, mainly due to fluid overload, to spinal anesthesia, uh, when there is rectal pain and spasm, especially if you have a high ligation, surgical trauma, it depends from the seizure, size, and number. If you put anterior in the male, deep, big seizure is more common, especially if there is a rectal packing, if you use uh, anticholinergic and narcotics. So it's very easy to prevent liquid restriction, local anesthesia, more than spinal anesthesia, ambulatory surgery, pain, good pain control, a good, pain, a good uh, patient instruction. Uh, if the patient uh, doesn't urinate, you need to put a, a, a catheter. And uh, if uh, there is a residual more than 5 ml, you need to leave the catheter for at least 24 hours. UTI is common in these patients, especially if they, if they have urinary detention. Uh, antibiotics for five days are mandatory. And, if the problem lasts, you, you need to call a neurologist, especially in uh, older male. Constipation is a, another common problem. It's due to the effect of analgesic, consequences of the anesthetic, surgical trauma, reduced deambulation, fear of defect aid by the patient, uh, patient's history is bowel habits, uh, risk of impact is, uh, is very high. So, 
you need to give patients bark laxative, stimulant laxative. And those should be started the evening uh, of the surgery and every week, and every evening for one week. Double dose from post-operative day two if there is no bowel movement. If negative, vigorous laxative from post-operative day three. If negative, enema at post-operative day five. After seven days, surgery and evaluation for fecal impaction, and then in that case, you need to do an AUA. Hemorrhage. This is uh, not uncommon, and I think it's the most serious complication that we may have, especially because it occurs a few days after surgery. It's true that you may have an early bleeding after surgery, but this is mostly due to an incorrect surgical technique. So if the patient has a bleeding immediately after surgery, I believe that the problem is the surgeon and the technique that he used. But usually, the bleeding occurs when the patient is at home. Usually it's between four or five days after the discharge, with a range between three and 14 days. This is unpredictable. It starts immediately after it defecates, usually, and it calls you over the night or uh, in, the, in the early morning after, uh, after it defecates. Uh, it's unpredictable. Mostly it's due to a local sepsis, and the range is between 1%, 2% to 5% according to the, the user technique. In our experience, it's around 4%. But how you can prevent the early bleeding? First of all, right indication and right surgery. If you have huge piles, uh, I think the best technique is just remove with the standard milligram Morgan. I will not go and use a arterialization, for example. Seizure located, always. Even if you are confident with the radiofrequency, radiofrequency surgery, I believe that the, the pedicle of the pile, a stitch is always useful. Meticulous surgical technique, no rush. Choose the right staple. If you want to do a stable hemorrhoidopexy or if you prefer a star, choose the right staple. If you suspect the bleeding, do immediately surgery and seizure immediately. Don't, don't delay. I've seen a lot of surgeons that they do surgery for hemorrhoids and then they admit the patients that they think that the bleeding comes from uh, diverticular disease. I believe every one of you heard about that. If you have a bleeding three, four days after surgery, surgery for hemorrhoids, the bleeding is from hemorrhoids. If I, I never seen a bleeding from diverticular disease after hemorrhoids. Never. Delayed hemorrhage. This can be treated with the hand anal packing. A Foley catheter, in our experience, is very, very effective. Transfusion are common. Uh, the use of sealant can be useful, but I believe that the best thing to do, if you want to use a sealant, a sealant is go to surgery and put a stitch. Stable bleeding is uh, quite different. It's uh, more common, it's 5% at least was more common in the early years when we start to use the stable, is more rare today. To prevent, you need to reinforce the suture, use uh, the right stable, as I told you before, sign the gun to the absolute limit, and use a post-operative endo-anal endo -anal sponge. <clears throat> this is how we detreated our patients with, uh, with bleeding. And you see that 17 required surgery, and one patient required a second, a second look. Bleeding can be not so obvious, not through the anus, but you may have an hematoma all around the rectum. It's uncommon. It's about one, less than 1%. You can wait for a spontaneous drainage. You can uh, open the staple line and clean it. I don't use to do this. You may try a perineal drainage. This is a very rare that may work. Or you can do a CT scan and drain it with a, with a CT scan. Usually for a, a, a stable hematoma, what we do is just wait. We just do monitor with the CT scan and give antibiotics for several days, double antibiotics. 
uh, we just check it for with the CT scan and weigh it absorbed by itself. We are not going there, we not put needles, we avoid every kind of maneuver that may allow bacteria to go in and get an infection. So uh, if patient is stable, uh, he may have urinary retention with pain, uh, just treat the pain, antibiotics and, and wait. The majority of these cases may solve spontaneously with uh, any other intervention or, or, or other. Different if you have an active hematoma. This is a uncommon, very uncommon. I did put less than 1 percent, but it's uh, less than 0 1 percent usually. You need to wait in transfusion. Transvaginal compression and the Stengstagen Blackmore probe can be useful. Hemostatic transanal seizure with or without drainage, embolization, and laparotomy may be required. All this depends how is the patient. Infection. Infection of the hemorrhoids is very rare, but infection or local sepsis is uh, mainly the reason of bleeding when you do a standard conventional hemorrhoidectomy. Uh, can be early or late after surgery, depends from the type of surgery. Uh, it depends from a correct use of uh, antibiotics. Warm seeds baths are useful, but even this complication is really unpredictable, but you see that it's very, very, very rare and be equal in our series. If you Milligan Morgan, Ferguson is a little bit higher and probably this usual may help with this. We had infection in patients with Ferguson and in patients with, who had Ferguson we had anal fistula. Usually a very simple anal fistula, intrasphinteric or intersphinteric, very easy to treat. You need just to lay it open without any sequel. Can, if the uh, fistula is more complex uh, then you may choose what you prefer, but what we do is put a draining seat on, and then after seven, eight weeks, tr treat the fistula if it's a transpinteric uh, according to, to the kind of the fistula. So it can be a flap, collagen ply, paste. We don't use the plug anymore. Now, I want to open a parenthesis regarding the staple demorotopexy uh, and STAR mainly regarding the so-called life-treating complications that um, gave us a lot of fear over the last decade. So some of us, every night they used to fire this table, had the, oh, what's going to happen, I may have some uh, bad complication. And if you go through the literature, life-treating complications, especially in prospective studies, are very, very rare. So you see here, seven cases after stable demorotopexy uh, in four years. This is a, a 2004 paper. And uh, see through the years, between 2000 and 2004, there were 16 severe complications described in 13 papers. And most of these papers were case reports, never described in prospective randomized trials. The ratio according to the literature, was less than 2%. Less than if, you, if you see this, uh, these lies, between 2005 and 2009, the ratio was uh, five times less than, be the, than before. So it's down to 0.3% with 23 severe complications, mostly were case reports. Even lower and see the last four years, it's very, very rare. So I believe that the majority of these uh, cases at the beginning were mainly due to the surgeon expertise. Obviously, you need the learning curve to the kind of the stable technology changed over the last 10 years, training changed, and so uh, I, I would say that life treating complications are not so frequent today. I mean, are very, very rare, especially in expert hands. Are and these uh, are uh, complications over the years for uh, stable demoroidopexy. Uh, this is a paper that shows that the majority in the past, 
were due to technical error, especially if you close the rectum. We had experience uh, 15 years ago of uh, a closure of the rectum after we stapled, and it was our technical error. It was not the staple, was not the, the technique, it was our uh, learning curve. Patients had the stoma at the hand. But let's see all the other techniques. Uh, 2006, 29 papers, 40 patients, 10 died as a result of their sepsis. Of those 10, see, 17, uh, of, of all these 40 patients, 17 had rubber band ligation, three had the sclerotherapy, one had the cryotherapy, 10 had the standard conventional hemorrhoidectomy, and seven had stable hemorrhoidopexy. And you may have a serious complication even if you do a rubber band ligation. This is more common when you have a patient with an underlying disease like HIV, for example, but may happen. It's a very simple ambulatory procedure, but there is a risk of death. The death is usually secondary to a Fournier gangrene. You may have bleeding, you may have uh, retroperitoneal necrotizing fasciitis, liver abscess, a portal PMA. And if you think that you may have less risky surgery with no complication, <coughs> easy to do, with uh, less pain, I, in our experience the pain was not so high, but uh, some papers in the literature show that you may have more pain than a standard uh, conventional open hemorrhoidectomy. You may have serious complication even if you just think that using a probe, put a stitch, like the arterialization, this is a, a case of rectal perforation after transana, uh, the arterialization of hemorrhoids. Even more, patients may undergo a diverting stoma after a simple plane de-arterialization. So, or you may have an abscess, a brain abscess, bacteria that they go through the veins directly to the brain. So, we'll go back to the standard common or uncommon complication after hemorrhoidectomy. Well, just to tell you that, to say you that you may have serious complication with all techniques. So you need to choose the right surgeon, the right patients, and the right technique. So rectovaginal fistula is uh, uncommon uh, and is observed when you do uh, stable demorodopexy with uh, a percentage up to 0.2% of the cases. To be honest with you, I never observe, in my experience, a rectovaginal fistula. Early fistula is due to a technical error. There is no doubt. Maybe secondary to an hematoma, the anterior rectal wall, and this hematoma may turn to be infected, and this may develop a fistula, a late fistula. Rectal flap and vaginal flap can be useful. I would say that the rectal flap is much, much better than the vaginal flap. Usually, a colostomy is necessary as well an ileostomy. Uh, transvaginal closure anterior hemistar has been described. Uh, anorectal stricture is uncommon, uh, but may be more common when you do an extensive surgery. We did observe more anal stricture at the beginning of our experience with the radiofrequency because we were tempted to remove as much as we can. And in that case, the anal stricture was, uh, was more frequent. In our experience, it's about 1%. You see, with the radiofrequency, it's 2%, and mostly at the beginning of our series. Because our attempt to remove more, we didn't leave enough bridges between, between piles. Uh, how you can prevent it. Respect skin bridges, use knife for skin, don't use diatermy, use just a plain knife. Retract margin if radiofrequency is used, dilatation once a week, size 
anal dilator twice a day for four uh, weeks. Then if it doesn't work, you may require pneumatic dilatation or uh, surgery with anoplasty according to patient condition and surgeon experience. Incontinence. We are all uh, afraid of incontinence after surgery for hemorrhoids, but it's very rare. If you choose the right patient and the right surgery, incontinence is very, very rare. In our experience is 0.5%. Uh, we didn't observe any incontinence with stable demoroidopexy and with the uh, arterialization. And with Milligan Morgan was 1.54% and 0.6% with uh, a closed hemorrhoidectomy. Uh, mainly of this incontinence is usually temporary. And biofeedback on pelvic floor physiotherapy helps to recover. Working agents for uh, additive sphinteroplasty or surgical sphinteroplasty or sagra nerve modulation may be helpful. But again, the right surgeries uh, and the right surgeon are uh, the factor that may uh, determine if you have or not one of these complications mainly. Just a few words on regarding recurrence. This is the rate of recurrence after uh, Milligan Morgan surgery. Rate of recurrence is very difficult to describe because it depends from the follow up, from the number of the patients, the type of the follow up. Uh, so you, when you go through the literature, the range is very, very, very wide. Uh, I will show you uh, this study that shows that after 10 years, the rate of recurrence is uh, between 25 and 35 percent. And even the definition of uh, recurrence depends because patients may speak about recurrence uh, on bleeding, recurrence of uh, sense of prolapse uh, and other symptoms, and the surgeon may have another description of recurrence. Sorry. Now, this is what I told you uh, right now. Patients report the recurrence, traditional hemorrhoidectomy, 25%, stable demoroidectomy, 42%. As, uh, sometimes the patients who had the stable demoroidopexy speaks about recurrence and they have only anal tags. And this is not a recurrence. And this is a, a study that shows recurrence after uh, rubber band ligation and uh, hemorrhoidal artery ligation. See, even in this case, it's 50% uh, for rubber band ligation and 30% for uh, the arterialization. This is a study from Gabriele and uh, confirm the data of 40% of uh, self-reporting uh, recurrence prolapse in these patients. And it was uh, scientifically honest. <laughs> And those are results of uh, um, the arterialization. Immediately after surgery, just eight weeks after surgery, about 20% of the patients reported the recurrent or persistent prolapse. And this depends from the kind of surgery and grade of hemorrhoids. Not, only, not all the hemorrhoids can be treated with the same technique. In general, in general after stable hemorrhoidopexy, 7% of the patients may have recurrence. 13% of the patients have recurrence after the arterialization. I think I will stop with this because recurrence is not a complication, but just to tell you that you need to choose the right technique according to the patients. It should be a tailored surgery for every patient. Thank you.